Fight fans, welcome into a special edition of Inside Boxing Live. We're obviously not in studio. We're on the road from Capital here in New York City, the Bowery District of Manhattan, for the press conference between Andy Ruiz and Anthony Joshua. As you take a look at this man right here, Andy Ruiz will be trying to do what he did in June, and that was defeat Anthony Joshua. We're going to talk to all the major participants in this fight. We're talking to Eddie Hearn. We're going to talk to Anthony Joshua. And we're also going to talk to Andy Ruiz. Doesn't get any bigger than that here for you on Inside Boxing Live. Obviously, a lot of attention being placed on this fight. The first fight uh, turned into an overnight sensation. That was Andy Ruiz. We'll get his thoughts on what it's been like for him uh, in the three months leading up to it. Also, what's going through the mind of Anthony Joshua? I'm going to ask him that because I feel like the last three months have been all about what is he thinking? How does he feel? Is he gonna, how is he going to come out and fight? And also we'll talk to Eddie Hearn, who will give us uh, the rundown on the logistics of this. Also that Logan uh, Paul KSI fight, which is uh, turning the boxing world upside down. But a lot, a lot of attention uh, on this venue right here, getting ready for what is the biggest fight of 2019. What is the, the biggest heavyweight fight of the last 15 years? I think I can say that uh, with confidence. Andy Ruiz. Anthony Joshua, we're going to bring you everything you need to know on this upcoming episode. I'm a short 11 year career from the amateurs to the pros. I say I've seen a lot. I wouldn't say I've seen it all yet, but I've definitely seen a lot. There's times I face defeat as an amateur in my third fight. And imagine I would have stopped then. There would be no now. I lost in the European quarterfinals. Imagine I stopped then. Now. I'm lost in the World Championship Finals. Imagine I stopped then, there'll be no now. And nobody in this room would be here if they gave up. And that's where Let's Go Champ comes into my life right now. Let's go! Thank you. Bro. Oh, I've been through so much. I know a lot of people have been through so much stuff, but I've been through so many roller coasters in my life. So many doubters in my life have been telling me I was going to do nothing just because of my appearance, the way I look. But at least, I think I'm a, a proof where people can say, man, if he did it, I could do it. And they could. As long as you train hard, you dedicate yourself, and you believe what you want to do. So what I believe in December 7th, the same results is going to happen. I'm going to train my ass off. God's in my side. And we're going to win. Para Mexico, vamos a ganar todo. Vamos a regresar estos cinturones para Mexico. Como tengo la, la sangre de mexicanos y con todo mi equipo. Y vamos a lograr todo. Gracias a Dios. Toda la gente. Gracias. More IBL coming up next. All right, we're here with Eddie Hearn. The press conference just wrapped up between Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua yesterday, Saudi Arabia today, New York City. They both stared each other into each other's eyes again. What did you see this time opposed to yesterday? Um, I saw like respect, but I saw seriousness from both guys. I think everybody knows this is going to be a different kind of fight this time. I'm not saying things won't unfold the same way, but in terms of the focus and in terms of the size of the fight. Like the first fight, it was like AJ's... American debut, Andy Ruiz, nice guy, hasn't really got a chance. Now it's like a 50-50 fight. flip flopping a little bit. Yeah, but Ruiz mean, is more, you know, he seems like he's more loose. Yeah. And Joshua, if you're sitting, sitting on that stage, yeah. he was zeroing in, wasn't yeah, laughing at any of your jokes. Yeah, because yeah, he never laughs at my jokes anyway. But look, last time, I won't say he didn't want to fight Andy Ruiz, but he had no, like, he, he was fighting Gerald Miller. He really wanted to punish General, Gerald Miller. Then he got Andy Ruiz. Okay. But like, you know, even on fight week, everyone's talking about Wilder this, Wilder that. He didn't have the same mentality and focus as he does today. Doesn't mean he's going to win, but you'll see a different Anthony Joshua on December 7th. Now, a lot of the, the build-up to this fight, the last three months, has been about the psyche mm. uh, of your guy, Anthony Joshua. I'm going to ask this him as well, but I'll ask you because, uh, you know, you're his promoter and whatnot. What is it like to have the entire sporting world, the entire entertainment world, wondering what's going on in your head? Uh, it's just that comes with being a superstar. You know, everybody overanalyzes everything, don't they? Everything that he says. Oh, he said this, said this about Lennox. Like, oh, wow, he's unfolding. No, he's not. He's just really decided, you know what? I've tried to be that guy. I've tried to be that role model. And if you push me and push me and push me, I'm going to tell you what I think. So I like that. I like to see that edge. The challenger mentality for this fight is very important. 
You know, it's not this guy who's got everything, he's got all the belts. He doesn't. He's a challenger. He's challenging for the world title. And if we can get that challenger mentality in him, which I believe is there, I will believe I believe you'll see a different Anthony Joshua in this fight. Um, it's going to be really fast. I think we should maybe, uh, uh, you know, psycho analyze Andy Ruiz instead. You know, we do. Fame got to him. You know, is it? I mean, the iced yeah, out. Know, like yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I, I think I think Andy Ruiz, Andy Ruiz, and one of the reasons he won that first fight is because he just don't he don't think he don't care. He goes in there and he tries to win. Nine nine out of ten heavyweights. Nine and a half. 9.9 .9 out of 10 heavyweights, when they got hurt by Joshua, would have backed up against the ropes, would have tried to survive, and would have got knocked out. He gambled, and it, boy, did it pay off. So can he do it again? Will Joshua be as reckless? Will he be as confident? I don't know. That's why this fight is so huge. Now, inside of the ring, we at CompuBox crunch the numbers, and I thought this was interesting, and it's something I'm going to ask Joshua as well. 16 fights before he fought Klitschko. 57 of his, his punch, 57% of his punches were power shots. Right. Now, the four fights after Klitschko, he turned into a boxer. 57% of his uh, punches were jabs. Mm. Do you think that kind of... Uh, is what Joshua is now. I think he's going to be more cautious in this fight or we go back to the brawler? I think that's more because of the level of opponent. You know, if you're analysing those first 16 fights, a lot of those fights would go in crash, bang, wallop all over in a round, two rounds. Now he's got to be more careful and he will be more careful in this fight. I don't think he can afford to be too careful. He's still got to fight. He's got a box. He's got to be smart. Yeah, he has. You know, he was moving too much to his left last time. His hands were low. You know, when he hurt Ruiz, he came in with his chin up in the air. So he said it himself. All these things, you know, and uh, he's a deep thinker. In fact, the last three months have been reflecting on that defeat and sort of geeing himself up, winding himself up, get ready for camp. But when Joshua, he's very regimental. When he focuses on something, it's a good thing. And all he's been doing is focusing on Andy Ruiz. So the only thing they have to do is beat that one man. Okay, finally, what do you say to the boxing purists that say the, the Logan Paul KSI yeah. fight is an abomination to boxing? I completely think the opposite. Talk the, the boxing purists off a ledge here because boxing Twitter, you've got to ruffle they're up. They're right. You know, but, but hardcore, I knew when I got involved with this fight what the response from those individuals were going to be. Those individuals are 1% of the, of the world. I watched the first fight. I felt the same way as they did, which was, what is this? Then I saw it sold out in an hour. There's actually a clip of you saying that. Yeah, then, then I saw, I was totally wrong. I thought it was a joke. Then it did a million, 1.4 million pay-per-view buys. And you know what, the fight was okay. Like they trained, they were in shape. This time I said to them both, you turn pro, you respect the code of the sport, you do what everybody else does who want to get into the sport. You take your medicals, you apply for your license to the commission, you lose the head guards, the management didn't like that. What? Oh, oh. I said, no, you can't. These are super, these are no, I don't want yeah, uh, to see YouTube the haircuts. If you want to do it, respect the sport, do it properly. 10 ounce gloves. What? No, this has got a real, real fight. On the undercard, we want world championship yeah, boxing. What are you going to put on the undercard? It's, there's talks, Devin Haney, Billy Joe, Saunders, all these guys. It's undecided. But what you've got to understand is, if we're going to bring this audience into the sport, we've got to show them the beauty of our sport. Even if so, it's 10% that, that re you but, but, retain, but, 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 isn't that good? When they're watching on the night, 20,000 at the Staples Centre, instantly sold out. Millions watching around the world. Let them watch Devin. Let them watch Billy Joe. Let them fall in love with the sport. They're not going to fall in love with the sport if the undercard is a load of other guys like flapping around with head guards on. So let's not be naive enough to think that bringing such an energetic, dynamic new audience in the sport of boxing is a bad thing, because it's really not. So we get our stick, people will moan, and as usual, we completely ignore them, and we smash it up. There it is. You might get some sloppy boxing at the Staples Center for Logan Paul versus KSI, it's good. It's good. but December 7th, we're going to get a banger between Ruiz and Joshua. Our next interview on Inside Boxing Live is brought to you by Jack Doyle's Restaurant and Bar. Jack Doyle's Restaurant and Bar located just a few steps away from Madison Square Garden and Times Square. Go into Jack Doyle's for all your entertainment needs. From happy hours to birthday parties to private events, Jack Doyle's has you covered. Once again, that's Jack Doyle's Restaurant and Bar located on 240 West 35th Street. Dan Canova with the man here, the unified world champion, Andy Ruiz. Andy, we're in New York City. We're at the scene of the crime where you defeated Anthony Joshua. The last time we talked, you were talking about how you wanted to eat some pizza in New York City. Did you be able to get some? 
I sure did, man. And before the weigh-ins, sure. Uh, before when I fought Anthony Joshua, of course, I had a big pot, a big box of pizza. And where'd you go? Uh, I don't know. You know, there's pizzas every every single corner. You know, so but they're all good. They're all good. I'm flying from Saudi Arabia to New York now tomorrow, London. Do you know what time it is? Like, do you know where you are right now? What's it been like this whirlwind? You know what, we've just been here and there, but you know what, I'm just enjoying everything, you know. Um, yeah, it's been a long flight, they have us over here and over there, but they can't scare me with the good time, you know. So, I'm just I'm just enjoying life right now and um, going to different countries and, you know, representing Mexico. When we interviewed you last, it was before the fight, and we put it up on YouTube, did some good numbers. After the fight was over, I went back and looked, over 100,000 views, you are the overnight celebrity, overnight sensation, but we know that you had a lot of hard work that went into it what's like one thing that you can't do now that you used to be able to do just in everyday life I can't go to Circle K or to 7-Eleven and peace. Um, is that a good my, thing or a bad thing? Of course it's a good thing, you know, but of course I need my space when I'm with my kids as well, you know, but they're fans, you know, I w we wouldn't be here, us, us fighters wouldn't be here without our fans and our supporters, so I appreciate you guys a lot. As for the actual fight now, a lot of the talk has been about what Joshua needs to do differently. Should he box more? Should he brawl more? But when it comes to you, I feel like you just got to do what you've been doing your whole professional career. Do you feel like that gives you advantage in the rematch? Of course. You know, I think I think they're just thinking too much of what they should do, what not they should do. But I think me, I just gotta, I just gotta be me, man. I just gotta be me. Throw my hands go, let my hands go. Throw my combinations, work on a little bit more footwork, a little bit more movement. And but that's it, you know. You're one of the most ferocious body punchers in boxing, especially in the heavyweight division. Something we do at CompuBox. Over 45% of your landed punches are to the body. Are you going to target that big middle section of Anthony Joshua once again? Of course, you know. But we're going to switch it up because I don't want him to know when I'm going to throw it down there. So we're going to use feints. We're going to we're going to do a lot of different things, you know. Our next interview on Inside Boxing Live is brought to you by Jack Doyle's Restaurant and Bar. Jack Doyle's Restaurant and Bar located just a few steps away from Madison Square Garden and Times Square. Go into Jack Doyle's for all your entertainment needs. From happy hours to birthday parties to private events, Jack Doyle's has you covered. Once again, that's Jack Doyle's Restaurant and Bar located on 240 West 35th Street. Dan Kenobio inside Boxing Live here with the man, Anthony Joshua. And we're going to talk some boxeo now. New York City, we're back at the scene of the crime. When you touched yeah. down here in New York, did you have any of that, uh, like, oh, crap, I'm back to where it all went wrong for me that night? I know where you're coming from, but as a soldier, I feel like it's important to put these things behind you and move forward with a strong back, shoulders back, and your head held high. So um, we're looking forward now to my next fight with Andrew Ruiz. Now, it, the last three months, it's all been about what's going on in AJ's head. I mean, what is he thinking? What is he feeling? I just want to ask you, what is it like to have that where the entire sporting world, the entire entertainment world is wondering like, what's going through your mind? I think it's good because there's an interest. And um, half of the time, I don't even know what's going on in my mind. I'm just waking up day to day. You know, you just set my own targets, my to-do list. So the main thing that's going on in my mind is just kind of boxing, boxing, and making sure I'm fit for 12 rounds. Really, it's, I don't want to overcomplicate my situation. It's just making sure I'm fit for a 12-round scrap. Now, we were talking in the scrum earlier, and we are going over a lot of questions, and something came up with, if you come through this fight, victorious you said i'm gonna fight a dude from the pub eddie yeah. like i gotta find i need an easy fight because that's everything that's going on that's when i said wait, wait is that yeah. was that a crack at, at fury what do you think about some of the things that are going on in the heavyweight division right now i know like fury said that he's challenged all the top guys and none of them want to fight him and stuff like, I, I i understand that i've experienced it but you know these guys man we've got to do better as heavyweights even the ones that he's challenges we, they've got to do better because you know, they've been professional now 11 years. They turned professional in 2009. Fury, right? Yeah, professional in 2009. And um, if you look at the record, the stats in fact show that we need more stern challenges for the top experienced guys in heavyweight boxing. So it's the, it's the guys like myself, it's the guys, the Dylan Whites of the world, the Andy Ruiz of the world, the Joseph Parkers to challenge these older experienced guys that have been doing it longer than us um, rather than letting them fight guys that turn pro 
after me. So they're like third tier. That's how I look at their third tier because there should be like Fury, Wilder, then myself, like Fury, Wilder, Ortiz, the main Stavern, those guys. Right. Then there's us, me, Dylan White. Then there's a next tier, and you can't have the top guys fighting the third tier fighters. You take great pride in the fact that you're taking this rematch right away. Look at Fury, Fury and, and Wilder, and they kind of doing these these dance arounds where either guy could lose and potentially mess up the money. As they said, you take great pride in the fact that you know what I want. I'm gonna take a tune up. I'm going right for Ruiz, get those belts back. Yeah, even though it's a risk, right? But no one would truly appreciate it as much as myself. So I've got to do what's right for me, um, and I've got to take the rematch. It's a good fight. <clears throat> Who else would I fight out there when you look at it? The pool isn't that big, especially of good, lively competition. And I think Ruiz is the best competitor out there. So if there was honestly a better competitor than Ruiz, me and my team would probably speak and say, you know what? This guy's got more to offer. He's got, the, Ruiz has got the belts. The only other credible opponent out there other than Ruiz would be Wilder. So we've got the, the top guy right now we're fighting. So every challenge we take has always been the best of the division. You brought up stats there before. I know stats. I yeah, crunched the CompuBox, box, compu box oh, numbers. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe I met that, man. But uh, what we do is, you know, we put together the punch stats, and I found something pretty interesting on you. I don't know if you even know this. Now, you're, you're the pre-Klitschko, 16 fights. I looked at your punch distribution. 57% of your thrown punches were power shots. Were they? So now, you flip around the four fights after Klitschko. 57% of your punches were jabs. So that yeah. leads me to believe, when I crunch these numbers, is that AJ is now more of a boxer than he was a brawler. You also have to take into account the competition. Now, yeah. leading into your last fight, you were talking about, man, sometimes I just want to get in that ring and I want to go in there and destroy, but my, 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 you know, my team wants to you know, rein me back a little bit. I want to stick behind that jab. But long story short is do you think you'll come out like 57% power punches or do you think you're going to use a little bit more of a jab in this rematch? It's interesting that you say that because... Competition does determine the way a fighter fights. And are you saying after Klitschko? After Klitschko, you were more of a, you were using a jab more. 57% of your punches were jabs. I think that it's not a problem with the jab. I think in the Ruiz fight, it was a style of jab I was using. So even though it was 57% more, more punches, which were jabs, I think I have to improve on the type of jabs I use because not all of them may have been accurate may not have been successful, so I just really need to make that success rate 100% along with the 57%. Make our job very easy, <laughs> counting every single one, connecting on you know that. I'm saying? Yeah. And this is important. This is what makes a good fight. I look at Larry Holmes. We all know the success of him, and that was based around his jab. So what's to say that we can't replicate that? Have you been studying some of the, the, the rematches in heavyweight history? There's been some great ones. Yeah, I love, I love boxing. So... Uh, I wouldn't say the rematches as such, but one of my favorite heavyweight contests is um, Ron Lyle and George Foreman. Okay, yeah. yeah, they're just, I'll never forget watching that early on and my mate telling me, you know what, you're a heavyweight, yeah? That's what you're gonna be going through in a few years. And I was like, never. And we're going through these type of wars on a regular basis. What about, how does it feel to be a part of, of that now, this heavyweight? I mean, you're obviously, you're a heavyweight champion. You've, you've fought in front of thousands of people, but now like the true mark of, of, of a great heavyweight era is when they all fight each other. And now we have a rematch. So you're part rewriting heavyweight history a little bit here. Yeah, you're correct. You are right when we start, <laughs> when we start fighting each other. And this is what it's about. This is another, top-notch opponent on my stats list because I feel like I'm fighting a champion who I've fought, um, who have I fought? I fought Vladimir, well, Charles Martin, Vladimir Klitschko, Joseph Parker, champions. Joseph Parker, now I fight Andrew Ruiz. He's my fourth championship-level fighter in the space of uh, 24 fights. So it's, it's serious business and it is part of history. Not as we're doing it, we're going through it and just cracking on. But when we look back, I think the record and the stats will show that, yeah, this was a serious time in Danny Joshua heavyweight history. Find a man that looks at you like Eddie Han looks at Andy Joshua. <laughs> He's thinking, just make sure that money's in the account, son. <laughs> Andy Ruiz looks like your uncle who just socked your dad on the chin and taken away his car keys. <laughs> I think that's really funny, man. But you know what? I'm here now. It wasn't it wasn't easy to get here. And you know, even if I hit my uncle or whoever, I'm still a champion. Imagine breaking up with your girlfriend, then she's chilling with Anthony Joshua. <laughs> Listen, I don't know where this reputation has stemmed from. I'm a loyal man, I'd never do that.
Andy Ruiz looks like someone you would have a beer with at a weekend cookout than a world championship boxer. Obviously, he's a bad dude. Of course, you know. Um, you could go to my my house, we could barbecue, we could have a six pack or whatever you want. Bro, when Anthony Joshua is calm, everyone moans, says he's too nice. Then when he goes savage mode, everyone calls him a thug or cocky. Bro, shut up, man. Took the words right out of my mouth. Speaking from the same hymn sheet. Is it me or does Andy Ruiz Jr. look like a fat Daniel Russo from The Karate Kid? <laughs> You know, like I said, all the critics, all, all, all the stuff that they got to say, it just gives me more motivation and, you know, like I said, it gives me more motivation and, and more wanting to prove you guys wrong. And that's what I did June 1st and that's what I'm going to do December 7th. And it just, just sucks, period. Wilder would destroy his boring ass. That's me. But everyone's entitled to their opinion. I'm looking forward to that fight. I think Andrew Ruiz has literally stopped part has not stopped partying since the Joshua fight. This has got to be the longest celebration I can recall in pro sports. Last one. You know what? The last celebration I had was in my new mansion that I just bought. Thanks to God, you know, I wanted to celebrate early for my birthday, and that's what we did. And if he should have been there, you know. <laughs> Andy Joshua is a right effing beast. Oh, <laughs> Andy Joshua is a right effing bellend. <laughs> I just saw B.E. and I thought, yeah, that's beast. Dude. So Andy Joshua is a right effing bellend, isn't he? He thinks he's the best ever, but he's actually bang average and will get dropped again in Saudi. What a shame. The main thing is going to tune into the fight and the main thing he knows where it is. So the promotional team have done a great job. There it is, folks. You have it right here. The presser between Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz. New York City, they're on their way to London next. Saudi Arabia uh, just yesterday. It's been a whirlwind for them. But a lot of things that I took away from, from this press conference, number one would be the, the attitude of Anthony Joshua. Calm, cool, and confident, but laser focused. You saw him up on that stage. He was not laughing at any of the jokes. He was not looking around the room. He is a guy that is on a mission. And I just, you know, just talking to him, as we just saw in the interview, very relaxed, but also you can tell that he knows what he wants to do I I inside that ring. As for the champion, Andy Ruiz, Let's, Andy Ruiz is, is going to be what he's always going to be. He's fun. He's jovial. He came an hour and a half late, which is interesting now. Is he, is he now the A-side uh, in this fight, playing a little bit of head games with Joshua, comes in with the sombrero, talking with, with Andy Ruiz. You get the same thing from talking with him before the fight, the first fight, is that he knows that he is here for a reason. He's going to have a good time. He's going to have fun. I mean, there's two different differences here. I mean, if you take a look at, at Joshua and take a look at Ruiz, the, the tides have turned. You know, the tables have turned a little bit. It's Andy Ruiz that's loose, and it's Anthony Joshua that's more focused. I think that, that was the opposite last time. He also chatted uh, with, with Eddie Hearn as well, who had a lot of information on the, the logistics uh, of this fight. You know, the 15,000 person arena that they're building in Saudi Arabia because there's more demand for this fight. He believes that it's going to be a pro-Joshua crowd with all the Brits that are close by in Dubai and all over, but this is a massive event. Being here at this press conference, you know, I, I kind of knew it was going to be a big fight. Obviously, it's the biggest fight that's remaining on the 2019 schedule, but just being here in person here in New York City where this first fight took place, the energy inside the room, you know, the look around at some of the media that is here. It's not just boxing media. We have regular sports media. We have entertainment. So this just shows me this fight is going to be huge but a special thanks to our producer on this one Mr. Karan Badia behind the camera we're going to come back in the studio next week do a little standing eight count but a special thanks to our guests Eddie Hearn, Andy Ruiz and the man Anthony Josh will be back next week for another edition of Inside Boxing Live.